we're going to introduce a new operator in this video. This spin operator. And the definition is that it's going to be the sum of the individual spin components squared. So I've written this out. This is a general definition of what this is. And you can think about this as kind of like finding the magnitude of the spin in a way. Like, it doesn't quite work that way because spin isn't a physically three-dimensional vector the way we think about like a position vector. But you can think of it kind of like a magnitude. Now, this is in general true. We will soon start discussing spin one, so I want to be specific that this calculation will be for spin one half, but this is true in general. So I've already done the first step of writing down the uh, SZ, SX, SY uh, operators, and then pulling together the coefficients out front. So now let's really quickly do this out and see what this works out to be in the spin one half situation. So we have our coefficient out front, and now we're going to have a two by two matrix. So row times column, one times one is one, zero. One column, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Row column, zero. Row column, negative one times negative one is one. So this is interesting. We've actually gotten a coefficient times the identity matrix. Now we'll do it for SX. And interestingly, I have a habit of doing z first because that's the basis we're working in. If you did x first, there's nothing wrong with that. So now, row, column, 0 times 0, 1 times 1 is 1. Row, column, 0 times 1, 1 times 0, 0. Row, column, 0. Row, column, 1 times 1 is 1, 0 times 0 is 1. Again, we have gotten the identity matrix and the same coefficient. Now, you might think that there's going to be a pattern, and oftentimes there are patterns, such that if we don't get the identity matrix for this last one, we might want to check our work. Okay, so row times column. It's gonna be harder, because now we have imaginary numbers. So zero times zero is zero, plus i times i is negative one, but then I have a minus sign. That makes it positive one. Then this one, zero times negative i, zero times negative i, zero. This one, i times zero is zero, zero times i is zero. Okay, good. i times negative i is again positive one. So as you can see, we've actually gotten the same answer for each of these squared. Cool. So that's also the same thing as saying three times h bar over two squared. And now I can write this as my identity matrix. Now I am going to say that this is specifically for spin one half, worth noting. So another way that we could write this, and again later we'll find out why we're making this choice, is that we can write this as three-fourths h-bar squared, and again that identity matrix. So that identity matrix will in fact appear regardless of which spin we're talking about. So if it's spin one, Instead of it being two by two matrices, we have three by three matrices. So instead of it being just a two dimensional identity matrix, it would be a three dimensional identity matrix. But this number out front maybe does change. So I hope that that is uh, a little bit helpful in just introducing what this is and calculating it out. So another way that we could write this, if you then really wanted to write it as a matrix, you could either write this as explicitly three H bar squared over four, 0, 0, 3 h bar squared over 4, or you could just leave these as 1 and 1 and, and pull that coefficient out front. That's fine too. So we can then do some work of interpreting what this new operator is, understanding its commutation properties, etc.